Let me share something that I hope you'll find as interesting as we do. Now, these are copies of pages from an old Nigerian newspaper called West African Pilot. The paper was launched in 1937 and managed by Dr. Namdi Azikwe, who was Nigeria's first president. Now, this copy here is dated 18th of April, 1939. And you can see this section here is dedicated to literature. And then the other one here is dated um, 25th of April, 1939. And it's also there's a segment here dedicated to literature. Um, another one here is dated July 7, 1939. That's a long time ago. And you can see here a section here, your opportunity to cultivate intellectual curiosity and to be mentally emancipated. Books by world-renowned writers at 6D each. So you can see books by Norman Angel, books by S.G. Duff, books by um, Lorima, books on history and politics, books on science, books on world affairs. And then there's also here another one dated, I think, July 28th, 1939. Classics of Literature for the Young and Old. Tom Brown's School Days, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Robin Hood, Robinson Crusoe, The Heroes, um, tales from Shakespeare and so on. So, as at way back then, there was an attempt at nurturing public interest in literature. Almost every edition of the paper had a literature section or literature related adverts. Interesting, isn't it? Well, talking about Dr. Namdi Azikwe, who founded the West African Pilots, he published many papers and books on different subjects, especially politics and Africanism. One of his most important works is this book titled My Odyssey, which is his autobiography. In the book, Dr. Azikwe narrates how a particular book influenced him positively. You can follow the story through this reading. In December 1920, I was awarded the Borders Prize at the Wesleyan Boys High School. The book was entitled From Log Cabin to the White House. Its author was W.M. Thayer, and it was a biography of James A. Garfield, a former president of the United States of America. This biography came into my hands at an opportune time because I was then seeking for information regarding educational opportunities in the United States, and I was in a quandary whether my dreams could come true. I read the book over within two days. It was so interesting. It is now reposing in my library at Nsuka, slightly worn out but looking almost like new. Since these words were written, the library of some 40,000 books, etc., containing many items that can never be replaced, has been largely destroyed as a result of the Civil War. I have read it over more than 20 times. Thayer's book showed how Garfield, who had lost his father at the age of 18 months, was brought up in a log cabin where he grew up, chopped firewood, did manual labor, farmed, worked hard at old jobs, and finally worked his way through college. He became a teacher, then a university instructor, then an orator, then a general in the army, then a legislator, then a statesman, and finally he was elected president as a compromise candidate, only to be assassinated by an inordinately ambitious office seeker. This book also suggested the similarity in Lives of Abraham Lincoln and James A. Garfield in these words. Both of these statesmen were born in log cabins built by their fathers in the wilderness for family homes. Both were poor as mortals can well be. Both were born with talents in the highest order but neither enjoyed early advantages of schools and teachers. At eight years of age, Lincoln lost his mother, and when Garfield was 18 months old, he lost his father. Both worked on a farm, chopped wood, and did whatever else was needed for a livelihood when eight years of age. 
Both improved every leisure moment in study and reading. Both read all the books that could be borrowed from miles around. And each was known in his own township and time as a boy of remarkable mental ability and promise.